What's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video I just want to talk about a simple library I created uh, called Simple WPF. Now it was just a little side project I did, so it's not perfect, but I definitely think it's interesting enough to make a video on. So what it is, is basically a library that implements navigation through utilizing data templating. But overall what this does is it has everything you need for setting up navigation, uh, setting up notify property changes on your view models by default, passing objects and cache between views, transitioning into different windows, and one of the most useful parts of it is the data template manager, um, whereas if you followed older videos of mine, we usually have to go into our app.xaml, as we see here, and always add in a bunch of data templates for each view model and view type. Uh, this kind of eliminates that need. But moving on, uh, there is one thing, and it does need a little boilerplate to set it up. First thing we have here is uh, in our application uh, code behind here. Want to go over here? We just have an entry point for our simple WPF, where we just instantiate a new core. Uh, we set up the startup here. Uh, we give it the app view model, which is similar to other videos where you've seen us do uh, like a main view model. So this is basically the starting point view model. Uh, we have a default view model. I still need to implement it, but on this is ideally for when a navigation fails, it'll just result to this view. For example, uh, if you have some kind of authentication running and the token runs out, uh, it can go back to the login page. But it also sets up the first view that the user will see, which over here in this argument, when we set to true, this means uh, right when the application starts up, this will be the first view. Next, as I mentioned, we have the data template manager where you can just set that up. Uh, you can do it a couple ways. One is by loading data templates by convention. So this is where we eliminated the need to go into our resources and assign each view model with a view. This basically does it uh, through naming conventions. So if I create, uh, let's say, a red view, then the data template manager will look through our assembly for a red view model. Now remind you, this is case sensitive. So essentially it'll be looking for the term red here with view and then view model and it'll pair them up and uh, inject them into our resources. Alternatively, if you don't want to follow that naming convention or you want to assign them manually, you can always do a template manager and we can do register data template. And this is where we'll use some generics here. So the first will be the view model. So we could say red view model and then red view. Of course, I'll have to add in the namespace there. And then by doing this, I could just repeat this process to assign the data templates here on startup instead of creating uh, one in the resources. Now, lastly, before I open it up and show you everything, uh, we're going to go over to the main window and take a quick look at this. Now, you'll notice down here in our XAML, I replaced the window tag here with a simple navigation window. And we did this through adding a XML namespace to the library, the navigation portion. Now scrolling down here a bit, uh, we see we have everything pretty much normal. Uh, and what we've also done in the past here, you see the we set up a content control binding to current. Now where is the current? Well, if we go over here, uh, there is one requirement and we see we have our app view model here. Uh, we have to basically set this up. You can just implement the interface and it'll force you to implement a current and window property. Um, but to avoid needing to do that all the time, uh, you can just use a simple base class here of the navigation provider view model. And that's basically it. From there, you can pretty much do as you please. So we just have to set up an app view model, set up our window and our startup. And even with doing all this, uh, if you watch my other video, you can even set this all up once create a template so whenever you start a new project you can start from that template and already have all these things set up. But moving on, what we got here is just a bunch of our red, green, and blue view models here. We got uh, simple commands. Uh, this, also, this library also implements the relay command for you and an async command for asynchronous commands. And now we get to the interesting part here. If you'll notice, uh, I'm actually not calling the current property at all and setting it myself. I actually can call it through the navigate which is through the base uh, class that we set up here. And I can just call the navigate, pass it the view model, and it'll take care of the rest because we already set up our data templating. So it'll change the current just by passing the view model. Okay, so our application started, as I said, 
Uh, by default, we gave it a default view model and view. So this is where it'll go on startup. We have a main detail view model set up here, but you don't have to do it this way. Um, and then we can just say, let's go to red. Now that's not that interesting. We've done that before. Um, but in here, we can actually say, go to pink. We'll pass it pink and it'll go to this view. And the cool part is, is our pink view model and even our uh, red view model here didn't have to really know anything about our app view model. We didn't have to inject the app view model and then inject it again into the pink view model. This is all handled through the navigate. Uh, we also have a back, which this is actually not just navigating to a red view model, but the navigation keeps track of the history of objects we've been through. And this is actually just calling a navigate to previous. So it'll go back to the previous view we were in. Uh, next we have green. Now green, and then we can then go to yellow. And you'll see here we have a message saying you are not authenticated. And we can go back and we can toggle the authenticate. And we'll go back and it'll say now I am authenticated. Now keep in mind this library doesn't uh, implement any authentication system. So I have a cache object that holds a bool to determine whether or not it's authenticated. And this cache object can be accessed throughout the entire application, uh, anything that is deriving from the navigation system. So we can go back and toggle it once more. And now it'll say I'm not authenticated. Then lastly, we have our blue view here. You'll see that I have something called idle. Now this basically shows off the asynchronous command that we have. So idle is bound to the async commands uh, command monitor, which has a property of status. And this is basically just a command uh, that I have just it puts the thread to sleep for a few seconds and then it'll continue onto the navigate. So if I click go to light, uh, since I bound to the status, it'll show busy. And now it'll bring us over here to our light view. We can go back. You can still see that it's bound to the command status, which is complete. And we can run it again. It'll change to busy. Wait a few seconds. And then go over to our light view. Now, as I mentioned, this is just a little side project I'm working on. It's not perfect. I wouldn't really maybe use this in a very serious application. But I definitely think it's reached the point where it can be used in some applications. So just to take a little uh, exploration here, we'll go to our red view model. And we see all we had to really do here was set up a pink view model within it. We didn't have to inject any dependencies in it. And then we can just simply call the navigate. And then we can go to our pink view model here. Go down. Uh, and in this case, we didn't even have to implement the red view model. Uh, we just had to call the navigate back. Now, likewise, let's go over to, uh, let's say, our green view model. And this is where we had our authenticate. Now, this is a little messy way to do it. Uh, I only did it for an example. But we basically just toggle uh, in our view model base here. We have a cache. We can check if it contains a key of auth. And then we can get the cache object. Or we can add or update the cache object to a new value. And then lastly, we got our view, uh, blue view model. And this basically just set up our async command, which is existing in the library. And we just await a delay here and then navigate. And we'll notice over here in our views, go to our blue view. And we'll scroll down. And we see that I could just bind to the command here that we created, uh, get its command monitor, and then just its status. And I just want to point out one more time again, uh, it was very easy to do this with the data template manager. Um, all I really had to do was create these view models and then create their views. I didn't have to worry about any uh, data templating going into resources or anything. I just simply create these within the assembly and when I run the application the manager will take care of matching them all together for me. I have a few ideas of things I want to do. I also want to implement a dialogue system so it's easier to make custom dialogues. We've done a video on that. But overall I wanted to show the video for maybe some of you guys who are interested in playing around with it. And then also if you guys have any ideas of things uh, you would like to see in the library that would be interesting to see. Now if you do uh, want to implement this, uh, you can go over to your project and you can go to the Manage NuGet Packages. You can then search for Simple WPF. And you can find it over here from the nuget.org. And you can find the Simple WPF by Jobin28. 
that's an alternative account I use for more uh, like personal projects that don't have anything to do with Tosker's Corner. And you can simply just click that and then click install. 